nuclear fusion is um, basically trying to harness the energy source that we have in the sun. So you're um, combining nuclei of atoms together to make bigger atoms. And when you do that, it liberates an awful lot of energy. Um, you should contrast that to the conventional nuclear energy that we have at the moment, which is fission, where you have a, a massive um, nucleus, so uranium, and you're splitting it into bits. So it's completely different. When you get fusion occurring, certainly with deuterium and tritium, I mean, 80% of it is emitted as neutrons. So they just was out of the reactor. So you need to capture those neutrons and in a reactor, you would need a blanket. So it would be a material problem. Actually, lithium is, is perfect because you capture the neutrons, you heat up the lithium, and the lithium makes tritium, which you then put back into the reactor. So then you get hot lithium, and then you just heat up water, <laughs> make steam and drive a turbine. So that, that part of it is just the same. Is it safe? Yes, I mean, it's not. Basically, you have to try quite hard to keep it burning. Um, that's been a challenge actually for the last 40 years and we're pretty much there. So um, the worst that could happen is that the fuel that's currently in the in the reactor will just burn away and it will splutter out like a flame really. So it's, it's very, very safe like that. I would say nuclear fusion is green. It doesn't produce any carbon dioxide. When you burn the fuel, if you like, it just produces helium. It's very abundant fuel, so the deuterium, actually, it's really abundant in seawater. So one in every 7,000 hydrogen atoms in water in the sea is actually deuterium. And if you were to get that deuterium out and to, out of one litre and to burn it, it would be like the energy you get from 300 litres of petrol. So basically, there's as much deuterium as you could ever want. The tritium's a little harder. It's not stable, but it's got a half-life of about 12 years, so it kind of decays away. There is tritium around and we can breed it via lithium and there's plenty of lithium around. So essentially, <clears throat> yeah, deuterium tritium fusion is it's going to supply um, the energy that we need, um, and certainly today. There are several ways in which we're interacting with the new companies that are emerging. One of them is that universities are essentially training the staff that go on to work there because they you need sort of very specialized skills you need to know about plasma physics or supercomputers or novel experimental devices because they need to measure the properties of their prototype reactors etc so yeah we provide trained people um and they're actually starting to also kind of give back a bit to academia so for instance um we're starting to see PhD projects which are sponsored by these companies. It would be amazing if we could get it to work. It would fulfill our energy needs now and in the future without damaging the environment and the climate. And scientifically, it's actually a very interesting problem. It's we're working with states of matter that you know you find nowhere else on Earth, actually sometimes nowhere else in the solar system. So uh, we're learning a lot about physics and the nature of matter and the universe through doing this as well.